Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, my name is Chris Christian Dude, I'm CEO of Sandington Baines and this is Kevin Mooch and Shepherd, who's the head of the of CGI. Thanks for coming today. Um, we're a post-production studio that deals primarily in stills and animation for the, uh, for the web, um, rather than uh, uh, doing commercials and TV. And we've, we're very much a niche within our particular marketplace. And we work very closely with ad agencies and photographers to create imagery using 3D techniques and combine it with photography and stuff. Um, we've noticed that over the years, you know, there are certain renderers that we've used for certain specific jobs. Um, we were until recently quite heavily involved with Mental Ray. We had used Final Render before. We have used Render Man sometimes as well on further. Um, recently, we've, we've taken the decision on some of the work producing to actually switch to V-Ray. And so we're here to talk about why we did that and what the benefits are of doing that and how it's helped us create some of the work that um, we're going to see uh, today. Um, Kevin has, was the person that took the decision for us. We did a load of testing and we tried loads of different things and uh, ultimately V-Ray was the way we felt we needed to go. And he's going to show you a bunch of work, talk through it, and then at the end, if you've got any questions, uh, fire away. So, you So, uh, as Chris was saying, this is like uh, sort of old work, since this is all final render, I think. And like, this again is final render, and then sort of we ended up using a sort of weird mixture of different bits of software, one thing doing one that the fur is done, I think, in even in Maya fur or something like that, and then like the renderer of the pig itself is done again in final render. And we were sort of we were definitely mixing and matching renderers to try and get the best results that we could for specific things. We found that one rep our, our huge problem is that renderers generally are designed for two to three thousand pixel resolutions. Ours can easily go up to twelve to fifteen thousand pixels. So you kind of you start hitting lots of technical limits. So like trying to find stuff which could render say sort of eight thousand, ten thousand pixels worth of fur like was actually and still is a significant challenge. Like so for, as Chris said the we worked through some various renders in the past. Like, so we've used Render Man a lot like, for, for various projects, but generally it's quite a fiddly renderer to sort of set up, and uh, it takes gen a developer to really sort of be able to sort of push the renderer to its best ability. And we're a relatively small studio, and we always have a very constrained time frame, like all of these photographs or uh, pictures always are done in a, in a couple of weeks and a week like, like they're, they're, they're very short time frames for the amount of quality that you're seeing so we, we're always looking for shortcuts um, final render again we use this for a long time like and kind of i still like it as a renderer it does some great things the problem was that the support was dropped like uh I think it's because of the user base was probably 10 people in the world. Like, there really wasn't. It really, yeah, they, they, yeah they, they could, they, you'd sort of go onto a forum and there'd be like four people sort of they're talking about the same problem. So, so like after a while, that just became impractical. I remember in a situation where we had a problem we wanted to resolve, and we were we were sending stuff to the tech support, getting no reply. So one of our artists actually put the problem up on the forum, and they replied. So they don't actually reply via the forum rather their own tech support, so it was a bit weird. It was a good product. And so, sort of, by default, we ended up using lots of mental ray. Now, I'm completely, I really dislike that renderer for lots of reasons. I, and I, for me, V-Ray strengths are mental ray's weaknesses. So I'm sort of just going to run through why we sort of, why I feel that mental ray is weak or in fact why V Ray is strong is, is a stronger product. And it's not necessarily for the fact that they're they're good renderers. So this is this was done in mental ray. Uh, and like great image, like really love it, apart from the fact that it was completely painful to get to this particular point. Like that everything about it didn't work. Like that we ended up having to sort of be completely tortured by bugs in mental road, setting things up. Generally, this was for me the sort of last straw of like, I can't deal with this 
software anymore. So, but for us, <laughs> moving around Europe was actually a really big deal, like because obviously we've got a bunch of people who know how to use Maple Ray, we've got a bunch of people who that we've sort of set up on in the farm in a certain way, and it took a lot of persuasion and a lot of sort of effort to sort of move that into a sort of in, into a new direction, right? and so sort of it was. It should have been a painful process, but that, in a way, was the positive thing for me. It really wasn't that painful at all. So we did this in uh, Mental Ray, uh, and three days later, after this job finished, we did this, like, which was kind of a very quick job. Like We did we dropped uh, coins in Houdini like, uh, to sort of pile them up and then slice the pig. Uh, and our artist uh, just basically picked up the ray and did this sort of right off the bat, which I think sort of given the fact that he, he was learning the ray on the fly as we were sort of doing jobs, it's pretty cool. Like, and for me, the biggest thing about it, it's not that the ray and mental ray are better, you know, one's better render or the other, it's just how it's set up. Like, so mental ray for me makes things incredibly hard to do. You can do it. Uh, absolutely, uh, but there's something about it which makes it tricky. We found that some of the feedback we get from our artists was that they're spending too much time sort of firefighting with mental ray, <coughs> and sort of the technical issues that mental ray has, and having to set things up manually. Whereas with V-ray, there is a, an ease of use where you do get the passes out that you need to pump them into um, a new workflow and stuff. Which gets yeah. Like, so, so, so for, for me, sort of, uh, and, and I've kind of used pretty much most of the renderers out there, including the sort of more esoteric ones like Mantra. Like, and for me, V-Ray seems to sort of strike a really good balance between it being incredibly powerful, but actually also really easy to use. And that sort of is an equation which is incredibly important when you're production and you've got two days to do something, like, because you suddenly don't have the luxury of trying to sort of tweak shaders for, for a long time. You just don't have that thing. So this is something that we did in <coughs> three or four hours, like of just basically taking a shader. This is like it's a fragment of a sort of much bigger architectural piece, which was a combination of Piranesi and uh, Centelia. Like and sort of there's a sort of reason as to why we did that, but. For me, it's like it's, a, it's an incredibly enjoyable image, just because we're sort of getting through ideas, and that, in a way, is like why I'm a big fan of something which makes something easy to do. Because like what you're then not doing is you're not thinking about the software; you're thinking about the ideas, and the ideas is what sets people apart from the actual just the image itself. It's like where are you coming from? What are your ideas? Like, like all that. This is this is a relatively obscure two architects shoved together. They shouldn't live in the same world, but they kind of do. Right? And it's and, uh, and actually, what we were doing was we were testing out uh, re-raised depth of field and things like that and uh, fog fog. Like, but we decided just to do a quick test piece to sort of you know, push that forward. Like, and one of like, and Chris sort of brought this up very, very sort of briefly, but the big difference between Chaos Group and Mental Images is support. Like, the support from Chaos Group is fantastic. Like, we send them stuff, they answer our questions. Like, the same can't be true of Mental Images. We sort of, they, they don't answer our uh, support requests after five or six months, whereas Chaos Group will answer them after a couple of hours. Like, and Again, when you're in production and you've got a scene which isn't working, that becomes incredibly important. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so this is just an example. We had a problem with something not rendering uh, uh, right on the pig, and they sorted it out for us. Right. So very sort of technical things, or not so technical things, of like, sort of getting layers to work within the right is trivial, like, whereas getting layers to work in mental right and so it's like, you know, just just adding things, though, though they add up. Like, like the shaders tend to be a very easy sort of 
workflow, like the, you have like a master shader which you, you tweak. So this is just like a few different examples of a shader library which we pretty much take from the Chaos uh, website and then just brought into Maya and now we have a master shader library which gets us to sort of probably about 80% of where we need to get to incredibly quickly. And I know I keep on saying that incredibly quickly but it's just that's just the needs of production is that uh, we want to get to those places uh, as fast as we can so that we can make the image as good as we can like within a given time frame and budget like so that we can then start exploring more ideas like because that's where creators really start to enjoy working with us as a company is that <coughs> creative flight between things and if, you're, if you start talking about technical problems all creatives turn off like, whereas if you start talking about sort of more esoteric artists or kind of where you've got some ideas from, like, they start to get more interested. Like, so this is something that I did in probably half an hour. Like, of just like somebody was asking about an architectural space and they're saying, well, you could do something like this. And I love that power. I love the fact I don't have to really think about setting something up to, to, to do an image like this, which is like, it's not perfect, it's not quite real, but it gives an idea of how a project might go, how something might end up looking, like without the creatives having to make that imaginative leap, which actually puts the creativity more in the 3D artist's hands than you would think. Like, like and, and, and I, but for me, it's like, it's a very, very interesting time because as more of these tools get released, like the power of <laughs> creativity is coming more to us than, than going away. Like, so sort of just things, nice things, like being able to map that VXRs to, to lights and starting to sort of get real world reflections within studio lighting and things like that is, is great. And again, like so, so this was done in that way where we start to sort of match map soft boxes and things like that to for something and again done really quickly, done in a day. Like just just V rays, just RT. Like it, it makes it, it's gonna make a huge difference. Like the fact that like everything is going GPU based. Like like everything will is gonna go that way. And I think that we all have to sort of accept that and just uh, and, and get excited about it because again it's that sort of you're not waiting for things you're just having ideas and the ideas are, are the important things like this this was for the same project just the pig like so fur is fur is a nightmare it always is a nightmare like primarily because our thing's huge like they, they, I remember somebody coming to me and saying can we render 12,000 pixel high monster like Shrek or that, like uh, Monsters Inc. and uh, with, with, with a machine with three gigs of RAM uh, because nothing, it was all 32 bit uh, and sort of probably Chris watched me sweat for a while and then sort of went, yeah, but it's going to be difficult and V Range makes it somewhat easier to do the same thing. So this is a squirrel, it's, got, it's had tons of retouching on it. This is the old way that we did fur. Right? And this is the new fur, like, which we did in a fraction of the time. Right? And it, it looks better straight off the bat. There's nowhere near as much retouching to get it to this particular point as there was with the squirrel, which was, there was a lot of retouching. Right, thank you. Anyone's got any questions at all? Uh, not sure what you guys do in the room here, whether you're 3D artists or otherwise, but yeah, if anyone's got any questions or wants to share anything that they've come across at all, feel free. It's a good way, it's something that's a Uh, 
software that the vendor sits on. And that's quite interesting that using Bio is quite, quite a complicated sort of kit to turn around stuff quickly. And yeah, so yeah, I think that maybe you can come to one of those where things have taken ages so, and you've got a vendor that's going to build another software underneath it. Yeah, like, like, like if, if you're talking about this quick. Uh, if, if you were to talk, talk to me about which way our studio would be heading, it would be away from anything to do with Autodesk, <laughs> like and to do with side effects. I think they have that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 just, just for me, as yeah, like, like I personally love Houdini, like, like as, as a piece of software, like, it's great. It's, it's, and it's incredibly powerful. But so, so, so that's the sort of level of complexity. So sort of, like Houdini is incredibly complex difficult to use in one way. So my in, in relationship to that is quite straightforward. But, but yeah, I, I, I can see your point about sort of yeah, because I know sort of Max is is quite straightforward in some ways. But once you get to a certain level of complexity within your scene and from, from talking to people who use Max, it's it starts to become difficult. You know? like, 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 like I'm not sure whether that's a correct statement, but but I think that sort of some of our projects, like like Intel, which Chris showed downstairs, that project is incredibly complicated, and I think that we would struggle doing that. There's just one other point. Um, do you? I mean, you, you're you're sort of on the uh, field Originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 that, that's very much where we. Are. <coughs> that's where our bits. Is mainly stills or stills yeah. and uh, online digital yeah. digital stuff as well. I've shown a lot of stills today, but yeah, we do a lot of that. Come back to me. We can have it. Well, we, we have been actually. We, we do a lot. We do some, a lot of automotive stuff as well. And, uh, we've been doing some uh, some moving stuff with V Ray recently, uh, and the guys managed to make it work. Flicker three. Flicky free. That's not easy, is it? No, it isn't. But, um, but they managed to. Yeah. yeah, no, it's not. It's not a straightforward, but it's not easy mentally. The mental yeah. or flicker problems yeah. and all stuff. But, but on the whole, it, it, for, for the job that we had to do in the time we had to do it, um, three was the right answer. So, uh, yeah. Have got the results on the summer? Uh, not yet, because it's still under embargo. But it'll be up in a couple of weeks. I like that. Sure. Have you come across any limitations yet? Working with the rate that you could have this or the song easily or easier in memory? Uh, I'm sure there probably are. Like, because that's that's just the nature of software. There's gonna be I think that the skin shaders in, in Metal Ray are probably more powerful than the ones in, in V Ray. Like uh, just just off the top of my head, that's the one thing which Sort of sticks out. Like I think that most other things seem to be the integration in Maya as well. Does it, does it play well They're both the flaky. Like, like like that's that's kind of one of the problems is that kind of if you look at the integration between uh, Mental Ray and Max and Mental and and uh, V Ray and Max, comparing that to the integration between Mental Ray and Maya and Mental Ray and V Ray and Maya, like, they're not they're not as locked into the product and I, I don't know why that is but but Max always seems to have better support for the underlying functions of the renderer. I, I don't know why. I think I've, I've got some ideas. Sorry, someone else? Yeah, hi. Yeah, I was going to say on the integration part, would you say that it was more the fact that V-Ray sort of integrated better than Lensray was that was moved you over there? I think so. I, I, I think that that is definitely part of it. To be honest with you, the biggest thing for me is support. Yeah. That, like, like that, that more than anything else is the fact of like, if you have a problem, you can talk to the developers and they will actually listen to you. Like, and I, I think that, that's, that, 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 that is incredibly important. One thing I miss, well, I use both still, but I, you found an elegant solution for like the MIP man shadow shader and V-Ray? Because you have to use like a material band for it. It's a bit complicated. Yeah, like, like, I've, that, that, like I personally, like the reason that 
I like V-Ray more is that I don't do that much rendering myself. I sort of do much more of the sort of exotic sort of dev, dev design <coughs> stuff and things like that. So I kind of pick it up, press render, like it pops out, you know, it's like, that's kind of great and it looks pretty. Like, and like, like that particular, you know, the wrapper side of it, I'm starting to sort of get a handle on. But it seems to be relatively straightforward. Oh, it's not like writing code, but... No, 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 it's just not as solutions, some Yeah, un un undoubtedly, there are, there, there's always going to be sort of better bits of software, there's going to be better bits within, like, one, one software package as opposed to another, but you, know, you, you, you can always cherry pick specific bits and say, well, that bit's better and that bit's better. And I guess, in a way, you know, part of this talk is sort of, having more of that sort of overview of saying what do I really want to achieve and for me as a, a, a sort of running the creative part of part of our business is saying ideas are the most important thing not anything else it's like how we get across like new ideas to our clients and anything which makes that more more straightforward is is a boom we, we've done a couple of projects in the past. Uh, we did a job a few years ago where uh, we were we created eight aircraft from scratch for Cathay Pacific and their entire fleet for the history of their fleet, the 60 year anniversary. <coughs> and we had to model them and build them. Uh, and the, the final end result was going to be a huge, huge site in Hong Kong on a sort of metro station. And um, each of the planes was 12K with 16K textures. And I think at the time we used RenderMan for that, but we had to tile it to actually get the renders out at all. Um, the Intel job that we're talking to you about, though each of one of those images is 12K by 9K, and that, that caused some problems. But it wasn't because we each image was that size, it was we had to do so many images. It really, you know, there was smoke coming out of the render farm. It was, uh, there was, you know, the calculations that we're talking about um, were, were enormous, obviously, at that size, and we had 50 images to do, so, you know, it certainly, I would say... I had hair six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you could certainly say that it, 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 it tested the limits of what v is capable of. I and mean, it did break a couple of times, didn't it? It, it made it... We pushed it to its limit, I would say. And um, at least we know what that limit is now. And we've, we've had to sort of dial back a little bit and go back to maybe 9K or something like that. But, um, you know, and that was pushed on us because the agency we're working with wanted to be able to crop in really tight and, you know, take one section and zoom in and all the rest of it. But it... There are limits of practicality, but you know, V-Ray handled it quite well, but it did break a few times, and, and I've no doubt Mentor Ray would have broken more to be honest in our experiences, so just got to, you know, you choose your path and go with it, really, it's, it's the way we have to do it now. it will be sort of V-Ray and Mantra. I think that those two will be, like, like, like we're, we're developing an asset library across both studios because we have like, a brand studio and a creative studio and we're both now using V-Ray which is great and so, so we can use each other's assets which is, which is incredibly powerful. I, th I think that we'll stick with it for a while certainly until um, I'm, I'm happy with it. For, for the moment. And because we, because the way our studio works, <coughs> we do have a, a retouching section as well, so obviously we're able to develop a workflow whereby we know what passes that Vera is going to spit out and the retouchers know how to use them to take the images, you know, that extra 10, 20% beyond the final render. So we don't, we don't tweak and continuously tweak the 3D so that it comes out perfect and hand it off to a client. We reach a certain level of where we need that sort of flexibility of going so far with the 3D Having some extra passes, you know, like um, you know, like ambient occlusion passes and uh, you know, Fresnels and things like that, which just allow our retouchers to do some little extra bits of work afterwards. Um, so we keep that flexibility, so we're not constantly waiting for the 3D guys to, to tweak and tweak and tweak. We get it like 80 percent there, 90 percent there, and then the guys just do their bit at the end to get that create flourish. So yeah, there is a there's very much a workflow designed about around this sort of 2D final image whether that be an animation or a, or a still image, yeah, so whether it's compositing or stills. It works better because you just 
it render and you know the passes are coming out, whereas in, in Mentor you've got to select them and choose them and check that they've been rendered properly and all the rest of it, and then put them into a stack. And, oh. you know, it just gets a little bit laborious. Sorry, one more question. Um, how much time would you say you save like, oh, yes, according yes, to the yes, pipeline? Yes. Your so it's a difficult thing because you're sort of in the moment and generally you never have enough time. Like, like, like you'll always never have enough time. But sort of, I think that there's just been generally less worry and like less pain. I think more than more than anything else, it's that thing of like because you're not necessarily setting up so much stuff manually. Like like it, that it has a certain level of consistency about what's coming out the other side. Yeah, and with some of the eyes we've spoken to, like I said, we've got the two studios, one works predominantly automotive stuff and the other one and everything else, but some of the feedback from some of the automotive guys it's probably saving an hour a day. You know, when you're working an eight hour day, an hour is quite a lot. You know, add that up over the number of eyes we've got and the period of time that we've got, that's a significant amount of time. But like Kevin said before, they're spending time making the images look better rather than firefighting the technical issues that men are raised for. Did you guys consider at, at any time switching from Mars Max? Because, you know, if we, if we maybe accept that the integration of both the and Metro is better, that, that might have solved some of your technical issues. But, but it would be cheaper, I guess, right? Potentially it could do, yeah. I mean, it potentially could do. I mean, ironically, all of our Maya artists were Max artists. So, uh, <laughs> Because all the, all the colleges use Max because it's cheap. Um, so when we're looking for artists specifically for what we do that aren't, you know, that aren't going into games or film and TV, most of them have come to us as Max artists anyway. So yeah, we could easily switch back to some degree because they know Max as it is. But yeah, that's not a decision we've made yet. But it's, it's, you know, I, I take Kevin's point that there are some incredibly powerful features in Houdini that, that we utilise. Procedural and stuff, but you know, is everyone going to learn with Probably not. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's expensive and difficult to learn, but like the power, the, the, the other part of it is truly awesome and truly jaw dropping. It's difficult, yeah. yeah. I I'm just taking on the point the gentleman just made about switching to Max. I mean, we've seen quite a few good workflows today where Max can integrate with Photoshop and, and After Effects. And yeah. you, you might even find that your workflows are quicker mm -hmm. because you can actually export your layers straight into these sure, programs. No, sure thing. So it's always, I guess. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's one of those things, and obviously both of them are Autodesk products now anyway. But um, yeah, we've had that discussion before, and it's something that, you know, I'm sure again but you know when you've it's, you know it's a big decision to take and obviously a big pipeline change and you've got legacy work that you have to consider and as well. Also, we've just got so many assets set up in Maya yeah. and so you know yeah. you've got like eight years yeah. worth of stuff like which is all from and, and we still use that stuff so it's like you know, it is set up in certain ways and I think that that would be But 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 I you know, like, like I, was, I think it's just because just because of various things. It's not that sort of Max and Maya are you know, better or worse. Like, they're, they're different as far as I can see. I personally don't know Max as I said. And we we some of our artists have said, oh, I, I prefer Max or still. And some have said, oh, I really love Maya. Now. I didn't realise it. It swings and roundabouts really. But you know, in terms of the workflow and, and the work we do, you know. I think we could do the work equally as well and equally as easily in either software. But I think, like Kevin says, you know, the deadlines we have to work with, we need a really reliable renderer that's simple to use, gives us a great result, and gives the guys more time to craft their imagery. And I think that's why we made the switch that we did. Um, yeah, there are arguments for and against, but I think I think we found some real benefits to doing it. Um, and it's definitely freed us up creatively to, to stop firefighting the uh, Mental ratios, certainly, like, 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 just talking to going around and talking to sort of artists who've used mental ray for a long, long time, and then sort of saying, Well, how yeah, I know you kicked and screamed about it for, for, for a while. You know, I can think of at least two people who just like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Uh, and two or three months later, they're saying, Yeah, yeah, it's better, like, I wouldn't go back, which is an injury, you know, like, because I'm, I'm, I'm I was biased. Whereas those guys aren't, they put a lot of time and effort into learning mental ray and 
and two or three months later they're saying, well, I just wouldn't go back. And it's not, it, as I said at the beginning, it's not because Metro is a bad ranger. I mean, to some degree as well, when you consider what we would do as artists, really, to some degree, we should be render agnostic. Yeah. You know, we shouldn't, it shouldn't really matter. It's, we should know about lighting and composition and you know, texturing and all those other things that make a great image, and then you just choose the render that's going to deliver the image for you properly. Um, so we're not, it's not about loyalty to a particular render, it's what can help you get the job done. Um, we give you the best result in the best possible time. But uh, yeah, it's just the shift that we have to make. But on the whole, all of them do a job, and we've just landed on this one now as being the, the one we think's for us. Cool. Well, yeah, thanks for your time today. Um, hope you found that interesting. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants to pop up and say hello and ask us any more questions, feel free. Thanks very much.